The Adventures of an Understudy by Anthony Ho Summary The Adventures of an Understudy by Anthony Hope follows the escapades of Sidney Price, an aspiring actor who finds himself thrust into the limelight when the leading actor is unable to perform. Sidney navigates the challenges of theatre life, facing eccentric colleagues, romantic entanglements, and unexpected opportunities. His journey involves a mix of humor, romance, and theatrical intrigue. Through Price's experiences, Hope satirizes the theatrical world, highlighting the unpredictable nature of show business. The narrative unfolds with comedic flair, offering a light-hearted exploration of the trials and tribulations of an understudy thrust into the forefront of the stage. About the author Anthony Hope, born on February 9, 1863, in London, England, was a prolific English novelist and playwright. He achieved widespread fame for his adventure novel The Prisoner of Zender, published in 1894, which combines romance, intrigue, and political drama. The success of The Prisoner of Zender led to several sequels, consolidating Hope's reputation as a master of swashbuckling fiction. Apart from his contributions to literature, Hope also had a legal and political career, serving as a barrister and running unsuccessfully for Parliament. His literary legacy endures through his engaging narratives that captivate readers with their thrilling escapades and intricate plots. Question 1. Read the extracts and answer the questions. Extract 1. Rassendil is traveling. God save the king. Para. Intro.T07. Question 1. The game had begun. What was the game? Answer. The game refers to the elaborate ruse that Rassendil was going to execute with the help of Colonel Sapp and Fritz, in which he would take the place of King Rudolf and participate in the coronation ceremony. This was essential because if the event would fail, the king's half-brother, Black Michael would take over the throne. So, Rassendil had to play the king's part for a day. Question 2. What would happen if they won or lost the game? Answer. If they won the game, all would be well and the king himself could rule over Roritania but if their ploy was discovered, Black Michael, King Rudolf's half-brother would seize the throne of Roritania. Question 3. How did Rassendil prepare for the role he was to play? Answer. Rassendil prepared for the role by taking instructions from Colonel Sapt. He told Rassendil about King Rudolf's personal history, his family, tastes, pursuits, weaknesses, friends, companions, and servants. He was also trained in the etiquette of the Ruritanian court. Outwardly, he was dressed in royal clothes with a sword in its scabbard, a revolver, and a helmet to look the part he was supposed to play. Question 4. How does the writer show that Rassendil is tense from time to time? Answer. The writer shows the tension in Rassendil with expressions like, I choked down a lump that rose in my throat, and I'm not made of stone. Question 5. How does the writer heighten the suspense when they reach Stralsor? Answer. The writer focuses on the scene at the railway station. 1. Fritz and Sapt get down before Rassendil to show their respect to him, posing now as Prince Rudolf. 2. Rassendil readies himself to be seen as Rudolf by curbing his tension and breathing a prayer to God to see him through. 3. And immediately the city responds to the arrival of their king to his coronation. The readers too hope with Rassendil that he will carry out his plan without a mishap. Question 6. Which line in Paris 6 shows us that Rassendil feared for his life? Find other lines in the story where Rassendil, Sapt, and Fritz express the same fear. Answer. The line, the last thing I did was to feel if my revolver was handy and my sword loose in the scabbard, in Paris 6 indicates that Rassendil was well aware of the mortal threat involved in the risky endeavor he had chosen to undertake. However, at the same time he was trying to manage his fears as best as he could. 
This fear for their lives was rife in the hearts of Colonel Sapt and Fritz. Colonel, Sapt prayed, God send we may be alive tonight, to which Fritz replies, Amen, thus revealing the same fear. Extract 2 Well, we went by A pretty girl Para 15 to 27 Question 1 Why did Rassendil disapprove of the extra protection when he entered Duke Michael's part of the city? Answer Rassendil was acting the role of the king and wanted to do his part perfectly. As a king, he should not show any hesitation openly on entering one part of his own city. So he rode ahead, alone, with the pride a king was expected to possess. He probably was prepared to face any consequences if he was caught. He also wanted these people to feel that he was one among them and was for them. Question 2. What were the different signs of approval that Rassendil received as he entered the town? Answer. Initially, as Rassendil rode alone into the town, he found that part of the town was barely decorated. But interestingly, the comments he heard from the crowd were not discouraging. One commented about his red hair, then another commented on his appearance. Some found him more handsome than what he looked in pictures. Overall, it was not as unfriendly as he had expected. Question 3. Why do you think the title is justified as the adventures of an understudy? Answer. In regular use, the word understudy refers to a person who learns the lead ace's role in order to be able to act at a short notice in the absence of the actor. The text is called, The Adventures of an Understudy because it brings out the story of Rassendil, a simple man who, just like an understudy played the part of a real king in his absence. He looked exactly like King Rudolf and hence played his part, attending his coronation in order to save the throne. He proved himself to be a good understudy who prepared well for his role, so that he could portray the king as accurately as possible. Since this ploy was a great adventure for Rassendil, the real-life understudy of King Rudolf, the title is justified as the adventures of an understudy. Question 4. Why did the marshal command the soldiers to draw closer to Rassendil in the next part of the city? What did the marshal's action show? Answer. The royal procession was now entering the part of Strelsall where Rudolf's stepbrother, Black Michael was the favorite. So the marshal felt Rassendil, posing as Rudolf, had to be protected. It showed that the people of the two sections of the city of Strelsall were like enemies, loyal either to Rudolf or to Black Michael. Question 5. In what other way does Rassendil display his self-confidence? What does this tell us about Rassendil's character? Answer. Rassendil pins one of the red roses on his lapel to acknowledge the applauding crowd because red was the color of the royal Elfberg family. He says he was so excited that he almost believed he was really the king. It shows that he was confident and comfortable in his role. He wanted to break down their resentment against Rudolf and make them accept him as their king. Here, he is not acting as Rudolf as per the instructions given to him, he is being his own self going beyond the rules to act as Rudolf might have done. Question 6. How does the deviation from plan add to the suspense in the narration? Answer. The deviation in plan adds excitement and tension, because Rassendil is exposing not only himself but the whole retinue to danger by taking charge of the situation. Extract 3. At last we were at the church. Paid me their respects. Para. 29-34. Question 1. What were Rassendil's feelings as he entered the church for his coronation? Answer. Rassendil was overwhelmed by his recklessness in going beyond his role and risking everyone's lives. And he became nervous as he faced the priests who would ordain him as king. In his nervousness, he was not aware of anyone but Black Michael, his stepbrother, and Princess Flavia who was engaged to marry Rudolf. Question 2. Why did Black Michael respond the way he did when he saw Rudolf? Answer. 
Black Michael went pale and dropped his helmet because he was shocked to see that his stepbrother had indeed come to be crowned as king. Question 3. How did Rudolf and Black Michael respond to each other after the coronation? Answer. Black Michael was uncomfortable with the situation, he was pale and trembling and his lips were parched. Perhaps he did not expect to see his stepbrother present himself at his coronation, hale and hearty. Resendil, as Rudolf, was more composed and hugged his stepbrother, dutifully kissing him. But both were relieved when the formalities were over. Question 4. Describe Black Michael. Answer. Black Michael, a minor character is the villain in the story. He has done his best to prevent Rudolf being crowned so that he could be king instead. He is shocked that his plans had failed. Appreciating the text. Question 8. Describe how Rassendil played his part as the understudy. Answer. The identical looks of Rassendil and King Rudolf gave him the role of an understudy. Rassendil's appearance perfectly matched the king's and it was easy to instill belief in the people. The tough part was deceiving Black Michael, the king's half-brother and Princess Flavia. He was well trained by the king's friends Colonel Sapt and Fritz von Talenheim. So his pretense had to be the best in the church. Gathering courage and confidence, Rassendil walked up the aisle as if he was the king himself. The shock on Black Michael's face was clear evidence that he thought he was King Rudolf. He played his part so perfectly that the princess too happily accompanied him in the carriage through the streets. Question B. Do you think Black Michael knew that Rassendil was an understudy? Give reasons. Answer. King Rudolf's unconscious state on the day of the coronation possibly made his confidants suspect his half-brother Black Michael, who wanted to usurp the throne. On the coronation day, when Razindil, in the guise of the king, entered the church, the change in expression on the face of the duke makes us believe that he did not expect the king to be there as he might have been responsible for the king's unconscious state. He might have suspected some foul play, but he could not do much about it as he probably knew that, in doing so, his own mischief would be exposed. Question C. Sapt and Fritz put their lives in danger to save the throne from Michael. What can we infer about the relationship between King Rudolf and Sapt and Fritz from the text? Answer. Sapt and Fritz proved themselves to be worthy and loyal friends of King Rudolf when they agreed to put their lives in danger to save the throne from Michael. Even in the absence of the king they agreed to the dangerous ploy just for the sake of the king and his kingdom. Question D. Does the text tell us why Rassendil would agree to such a risky task? Do you think he was brave, foolish, or adventurous? What choice would you have made in such a situation? Answer. In many occasions throughout the text, Rassendil has expressed his thrill at playing the part of the king. He has a sense of adventure and is brave enough to take risks. He travels a distance without his entourage to generate trust in the people. It is a mark of goodwill. There are many instances where his fear of getting caught almost compelled him to flee, particularly when faced with the keen scrutiny of Michael. However, he continued resolutely and was eventually successful. On one hand Rassendil comes across an adventurous, risk-loving person and on the other he shows bravery in the face of adversities. Thank you for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel for more updates.